throughout the lifetime of Sheikh and Dr. Ahmed Didat, he has been given very, 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 very basic questions that are very difficult for Christians to understand. And you wouldn't understand why, because he's explaining in a very profound way way and on today's video we have a compilation we have the best answers the best highlights from sheikh and dr ahmed didat so i hope you guys are ready how are you guys doing today i hope you guys are doing great and i hope you guys are doing well assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh before we get started you know the drill you drop us a like you subscribe you hit the bell notification if you're new and also remember to leave a comment so that we know how you feel about today's video but without further ado let's go straight into it y'all let's go let's get it Uh, the question is, if it's not, well, it's not very clear to part of the audience, that uh, Moses performed miracles, Jesus performed miracles, but he has no knowledge whether the Holy Prophet Muhammad performed miracles. Now, in the book of traditions, more than 300 miracles are ascribed to the Holy Prophet Muhammad But the Muslim does not make an issue of it. Because those miracles of the prophets gone by are things in books. They are a matter of history. So saying that, look, my prophet did this and your prophet did that. You see, again and again, the holy prophet Muhammad sallam, he referred to the Quran. A living miracle. You see, the miracles of Moses, you know, crossing the Red Sea, right, striking the rock and rivers gushing forth. Miracles of Jesus turning water into wine, killing those 2,000 pigs, drying up the fig tree from the very roots. Right? Now these are things in books. You see, you say, look man, I don't know whether it happened or it didn't happen. It might sound like a fairy tale to most people. So he said, look, talk about this, it's a living miracle. And I'm going to prove this to you, you know, in a lecture in the series, Al-Quran, a visual miracle. In other words, that you today in the 20th century, you can verify that this book is the miracle left behind, a living miracle of Muhammad left with you. You need a little patience for that. But if you look up the books of traditions, there are more than 300 miracles attributed to the Holy Prophet Muhammad wasallam. But the Muslim does not go out of his way to prove the bona fide of his prophets by those miracles. He said, here, a living miracle, you can see for yourself and verify yourself. But I want to ask you, you said Quran is the last testament. How can you think that a God that is alive and can see us in this very minute and have seen us since Mohammed died, Jesus died, has stopped to talk through other prophets? Thank you for your question. I think it's clear. We Muslims, we claim that this is the last testament because it answers all your problems. Whether it is palatable or not, I'm not I can't guarantee you that, that it will go down well. But be besides us Muslims believing that the Holy Quran is the last testament, you must think about which book currently that we have which book have we had in the 21st century that is as detailed as the Holy Quran after the Bible? There is no other book after the Holy Bible that is as detailed in terms of spirituality as the Holy Quran. It's only the Holy Quran and it goes even further to be a Quran, to be a book that specifies even things in science things in mathematics, things that are even in the 21st century that are outside of religion, things that will be done by people who are outside religion, people who are just living their normal lives, living their basic lives, the Quran has spoken about them. The people of the book, the Quran has spoken about them. 
this is a will and testament of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is the last one that we have and many people can realize that if only they can read the book if only you can open the book and start reading it you will begin to see the wisdom in it even j cole the famous j cole the famous rapper j cole he said in his lyrics of one of his songs on the on his latest album he said somebody gave him a quran his friend was trying to put him on islam and he gave him a quran and he read it and he realized the wisdom in it if j cole can say that what does that tell you but it answers your problems now this is what jesus christ had promised you see in the gospel of saint john jesus christ is telling his disciples he said i have yet many things to say unto you but he cannot bear them now jesus god had given him guidance to guide humanity till doomsday but the people that he was addressing his immediate disciples they were not fit to receive the message so he said i have yet many things to say unto you but he cannot bear them now how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak from himself but what things soever shall he hear that shall he speak and he shall declare unto you the things that are to come he shall glorify me jesus now we say who is this spirit of truth we muslims claim muhammad is that spirit of truth and we are prepared to reason with you i know prejudices die hard it's natural but let us come come let us talk together let us reason together the bible says come let us reason together the quran says pull tell them ya ahl al kitab o jews and christians talab come ila kalimatin sawa'in bainana wa bainakum that we come to common terms as between us and you the terms are say number one Allah na buda illa Allah that we worship none but Allah God Almighty. Don't worship men. Don't worship monkeys. Don't worship elephants and snakes. Worship the one and only God that there is. As the Bible says, God is spirit, and those that worship Him must worship Him in truth and in spirit, not in form, shape, or size. That is what the Quran is appealing to you. To the Jews and the Christians, come. Let us get together on a common platform of worshiping the one and only God. And this book testifies. that Jesus is the Christ and in the first epistle of John chapter 4 verse 1 it says beloved believe not every spirit but try the spirits whether they are of god for many false prophets have gone out into the world it continues the spirit that confesseth that Jesus is the Christ is of god this spirit meaning the spirit is synonymous there for a prophet the prophet that says that jesus is the christ is of god and hold on there hold on there i want to add a little spanner in the works i want to throw a spanner in the works here listen here you must test every spirit to see if it, it's a spirit of god you must test every spirit to see if it is of god right and this spirit if it is of god you will know if it speaks of the christ if it speaks boldly of the Christ but now you must remember what Jesus said Jesus said that many will come in my name claiming to be of God claiming to be prophets that are coming to bring the truth many will say we have prophesied in your name many will say we have cast demons out in your name that means miracles can also be done through his name but by people whose hearts are way far from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala people whose hearts are way far from even Jesus Christ himself peace be upon him that is why he said many of them will come but at the last day at the day of judgment i will say to them i have never known you i never knew you get thee away from me he will say that because many prophets will come in his name but will not be the people who come in the spirit of god this is the only faith after jesus christ the only non christian faith which claims and speaks to the whole world that jesus is the christ who made us to say that muhammad and your book says that whoever prophet says that is so he is from god why did god wait for 40 years before revealing
to Quran to the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Suppose the Quran was revealed to him at the age of thirty. Say like Jesus Christ, he was baptized at the age of thirty in the river Jordan by John the Baptist. So he said, "Look, why thirty? Why not at twenty-five? And if it was twenty-five, why not at twenty? Why wasn't he born with a book in his hand?" <laughs> These are questions that you have to address to Allah. You see, as I said, the Quran is a book of telegrams. You remember, the Quran is a book of telegrams from Allah through His Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now you have to send a telegram to Him, God Almighty. Ask him, why did you wait till the age of forty before you delivered this message to him? It's not me. It's not in my hands. He chose Moses at the age of forty. He chose the other prophets, David at the age of forty. He chose Jesus at the age of thirty. Right. That's his business. When the time is ripe, the message is given. With regards to greatness, you see, if you read, I don't know whether we're in touch with what is going on in the world today. A certain Michael H. Hart has written a book called The Top Hundred, the most influential men in history. And you see, the number one, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. In the Times magazine, the greatest leader of all times, Jules Masserman, a Jew, a United States economist, is the greatest leader of all time was Muhammad. Lamartin, in his history of the Turks, he is the greatest man that ever lived was Muhammad. Why did God choose this man? You know, at the age of forty, and why is he recognized today? In the lifetime, every prophet, you know, you made a statement. I think that maybe you didn't know. You slipped out of your mouth. That Jesus was a great success. You know, Muhammad had to make migration. His companions had to make two migrations to Abyssinia. Jesus was a great success. That is not true. You know, it's not true. You know what was his. And according to the Christian, what they say, the man was killed on the cross. Is that greatness? Is that success? And all his disciples forsook him and fled. They left him in the lurch. All, hundred percent failure. And today, the Christian world are not following Jesus at all. According to that Michael H. Hart, he says that you see the honor for Christianity should be divided between Jesus and Paul. And actually, Paul is the real founder of Christianity, not Jesus Christ. So even as a religion, the religion that is carrying his name, Christ Christianity, is not his religion. So I think you know, my son, uh, you should check up these things, you know, before making a statement to say, you know, this man was more successful than the other. The most successful of all religious personalities is Muhammad, according to the Encyclopedia Britannica, edition, eleventh edition. Most successful. Well, I don't know. Nobody paid. I don't know who who paid them, you know, to write that down. I just ask you, what is truth? That is what Pilate asked Jesus, which he never yeah. answered. And I answered and asked you to so know the difference you, between this the, is the question the that Bible. Pontius Pilate asked Jesus. Sure. What is truth? Mm. And you read there, Jesus never answered that question. Sure. Right. I know. Now, if you want to know what is truth, this is what the Quran says. الحق من ربكم ولا تكن من الممترين. The truth comes from Thy Lord alone, so be not be those of those who doubt. And this is the truth. This is the truth. The revelation of God. It is the whole truth and nothing but the truth. This is it. Whatever God says is truth. Yep. On that note, what is truth? Sheikh Ahmed Didad said. The revelation of God, the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the truth. And that is very true. That is why Jesus came and said, I am the way, the truth, right? Because he obtained the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he was telling the people about it. He was teaching the people about it. That is why he said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but through me, because I was the one who had the revelation at the time, not the books that were there, but Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. But now that he has left, and he said that the Comforter will come and he will lead us to all the truth, the truth now has to shift from him through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the next person who will carry the truth. And who was that? It was the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And today we don't have him in physical form. 
but he left us the greatest gift. He left us the greatest revelation, right? He left us the truth which was given to him, which was portrayed to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the Holy Quran. That is why we as Muslims consider it as the last testament, the last true book after Jesus' departure, after uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's departure. This is the last book that actually contains the truth and nothing but the truth. And those were the best answers that were ever given by Sheikh and Dr. Ahmed Dida. These are just the highlights of some of the answers that he gave that you will find. If you, if you watch this video, you will see that most of the answers that he gave in his video, they are the answers that are outlining most of the videos that he has made. These are the core answers that actually answer most of the questions that he was asked on previous, previous videos that we have done on this channel as well. But thank you so much for watching today's video. That was a nice and quick and short video that we reacted to. Although it contained a bit of truth here and there, surely you have learned something. Surely you have grasped a thing or two. But before we leave, remember to like the video if you have not yet done so. Remember to subscribe if you are new. Remember to hit the bell notification. But let's leave it right there. Much love. Peace.